Hey, Arkansas knows. Sometimes you just gotta make a wacky lateral. Alright, what's up guys, Peter Jaguars here again, back with Peter Jaguars picking for week 9 of the NFL season, still going strong. Let's hop into it. Last week was fairly kind to us, we finished 9-5, and five, and that makes our season total rise up to 73 wins, 46 losses, so doing pretty well right here, and we still are working our way up, which is good, as we should be more confident and consistent as the season rolls on. That said, we're continuing this rap challenge, we beat it, I believe, 7 weeks in a row right now, need to finish with a record above 500, or we'll make a rap video, but hey, my pick's too fire right now, so maybe we'll be able to win once again. Thursday night game went fine. We picked the Bengals. You see the tweet on screen, and they were able to defeat the Browns 31 to 10, despite Johnny Football playing. So there we go, Cincy with the dub and a nice start. Bills are coming off a London loss to my Jags, but that does mean they had a bye week to rest up for this second matchup with the Dolphins, who are a much stronger team than they were earlier in the season. However, Tyrod Taylor is healthy. Sammy Watkins looks to be limited, and I'm a little bit worried that Percy Harvin being placed on IR is going to limit the dynamic features of this offense, but still, at home, pretty favorable. We're going to take them. Totally sucks to see Le'Veon Bell's injury. One of the top running backs in the league, and he's a great player. Fun to watch, all that good stuff. D'Angelo Williams should be able to step in and do all right. He runs with good patience and can do the job, but of course, that slows down that offense a little bit. But their pass rush has actually been stepping up throughout the year. It may be able to get to Derek Carr, who has been being protected by a nice offensive line. Somehow James Harrison, really old, but still putting in work. Jarvis Jones is actually being all right these days. So we are going to give Pittsburgh the lean. They are at home, but this Raiders team is something to be watching out for. Like the Bills, the Titans are going to benefit from having their starting quarterback return from injury. We're not sure if Mariota will be 100% healthy for this game. But still, seeing what Eli Manning just did to the Saints secondary, if he's in pretty good shape, can probably sling the ball and put up plenty of points. Of course, Breeze will do the same thing. Is Tennessee's defense going to have trouble stopping the man who threw seven TDs tying an NFL record last week? So we'll see how this one goes. Going to give the edge to the Saints. Their organization more stable right now. Breeze is the better quarterback, has more experience. Excuse me? Is that a call to look at the AFC South standings? Oh yeah, it's the, the, they're over here, you know, just half a game out of the division, just dropping that fact on you guys right now. As much as you want to talk trash about the Jags, half a game out. Who knows what will happen. I know the division sucks, but we'll take it, of course. And a couple weeks ago, if you guys remember back, I said I would pick the Bills in a little reverse psychology move because I had kept picking the Jags, we kept losing, I ended up taking the Bills, and we won. So we got to try that one one more time, of course, if it's going to work. We'll keep rolling with it. So right here, we are going to say we're picking the Jets, but my Jags got to step up. I think Bortles can do a good job. Fitzpatrick is likely going to need surgery on his thumb ultimately. May have trouble stripping the ball, get some strip sacks, whatever. Who knows? Hopefully we can grab this dub. If the Redskins can come into New England and snag a win from the Patriots, take away their undefeated record right now, then I will give them massive, massive props. But honestly, you can make just as good an argument for saying they shouldn't even show up and risk players getting injured, beat up, and all that stuff, and just take a bye week. Like, seriously, I don't know. Maybe they can do it. Would love to see it happen. It'd be pretty entertaining. But right now, there's no way we're going to any way other than the Pats. Rams-Vikings should actually be a very interesting game. We've got a great running back matchup. Todd Gurley, who some people are saying is already the best running back in the league. That might be a little bit of an overstatement, though he has been awesome. Taking on Adrian Peterson, who's probably going to respond back and want to shut those guys up, proving that he has been in the league for a while and shown himself to be an awesome player. So we'll see how it goes. I think both of them are going to be very motivated. Some decent defenses here, at least in terms of the front seven. So not exactly ideal matchups for each of these guys, but of course, they're so good. Minnesota, though, Bridgewater's got to be better, and Stephon Diggs has been awesome recently. I have a lot of respect for that guy. He's fun to watch. So we are going to go with Minnesota. But what might be the most exciting game of this week is Packers-Panthers. Packers were able to destroy Carolina at home last year, but they're only 6-6 six and six in road games since the start of last season. Great at Lambeau. Kind of shaky on the road. I mean, we'll see how this one goes. They are coming off a loss. I hate to pick against Aaron Rodgers, but Josh Norman is going to be able to lock up 
They don't have Jordy Nelson, who's obviously a big weapon, and he's someone whose absence is clearly affecting this offense right now. And with the Panthers' defense stepping up, I think Cam Newton's playing really well these days. We're going to say that the Packers grab another loss right now. Just about halfway through the video, I'm going to throw this all in right now. If you guys are enjoying, make sure to spike that like button down below. Appreciate that. And subscribe as well for tons more videos, Madden 16, and our Pick'em content. All that stuff. We're still on this road. 18K, 19, 20. Let's keep it rolling. PJAX crew, work it up. Appreciate that. Next up, we got Falcons Niners. You guys may remember a little Halloween spiel where I dressed up with my Gabber jersey and was talking about how he's so scary to watch. You know, that was funny. Anyhow, Niners go out and announce that Blaine Gabber is their starting quarterback, at least temporarily. Like, that's crazy. He's so bad. He's terrible. Anyhow, he closes his eyes when he throws. But we got to celebrate, right? So, Gabber! Oh, man, that confetti didn't work. <laughs> Wait, as well as I would have helped. Anyhow, if that isn't a reason, uh, if you haven't spiked that like button yet and subscribed, you know, we just dumped confetti, celebrating Gabbert. Am I going to pick him? Absolutely not. Oh, that was good. That was good. Appreciate that. Anyhow, Niners are out. Probably not going to be the most defensive-oriented game with Giants Bucks and firing of the cannons, TDs from each side. But regardless, Bucks are going to be a little bit worn down. Did win an overtime game against Atlanta last week as they were able to get some lucky turnovers, but did what they needed to, of course, and won the game. And I've been picking against Tampa a lot. <laughs> Maybe some of their fans are going to feel disrespected, but I still don't see them winning this game either. Eli Manning, to me, more experienced, likely to be doing what he has to. DRC can lock up Mike Evans a little bit despite some of those other issues with their defensive coverage. And because of those things, we are going to take New York. Remember when Peyton Manning was throwing TDs at will for the Broncos and Andrew Luck was the best young quarterback ever? His amazing replacement was going to lead the Colts to a dozen Super Bowls? Yeah, that was actually like maybe a year or two when the media was portraying it that way. <laughs> right now, much different story. Luck obviously not done and some injuries are what's really slowing him down. I'm not feeling confident in the AFC South, of course, having him quarterbacking long term in our division. But Indianapolis sort of in shambles right now, firing Pep Hamilton midweek. It's not like they had a bye or extra time to prepare. And the Broncos defense is so good that they're not going to be able to really get things going. Obviously, the potential for this offense to start rebounding, and it looked like they might have been able to do it at the end last week, just fell short to the Panthers. But they're not really going to be able to get it done against Denver. When you look at it, the Cowboys have been competitive in basically every game without Romo. Aside from that New England one, which was a really tough matchup, they've been doing a pretty good job. Castle still sort of iffy, but they have the pieces to slow down. Sam Bradford, DeMarco Murray, those guys won't really get going. Their offensive line is fine. And really, this team cannot afford to drop to 2-6. and six. I think they're going to be playing their hearts out. Des Bryant is back. Maybe he'll start playing a little bit better than he did last week, only with 14 yards or something like that. And if they can step up, really be hyped, rally around Castle and some of these guys, they should be able to grab the win. <laughs> Lastly, for Monday Night Football, we got Bears Chargers. I picked each of these teams last week to win. And guess what? Bears lost in the final minute. Chargers lost close to the Ravens. Those were both frustrating. Two of my five losses. So obviously, I'm not too high on either of these teams, which could honestly be wild card contenders if they really gelled, didn't have too many injuries, all of that stuff. But alas... Each two wins, and they're not feeling too great. This isn't the biggest Monday night game, but of course it is what it is. San Diego at home, Rivers to me still better than Cutler, and they are kind of doing better on offense. I don't know. I mean, Keenan Allen's hurt, so that's going to be a concern. I don't really have a strong edge feel for this game or anything like that. We are going to go with the charges, though. There it is, though, all of our Week 9 picks. One last look at the winners as we are wrapping up here. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more vids. Again, make sure to spike that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for tons of more content coming here to the channel. And let me know in the comment section one team that you think is going to rebound and make the playoffs this year. But anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace.